morning. Today we have Persimony um, by Stephen Cosgrove and illustrated by Wendy Edelson. <clears throat> Further than far to the very edge of the horizon was a path bordered in lacy fern. If you followed that path in the early spring rains and hopped from puddle to puddle, you would find the land of barely there. Barely there, where in early spring the flowering trees hold their buds so tight, afraid are they to release so much beauty in one tiny place. There, where the last bird of winter and the first bird of spring loudly try to sing the rain away. If you followed that path as it wandered through the dripping forest, you would see a change from path to rutted road without pause or reflection. That road wound through barely there and eventually stopped in the square of a quaint little village. The village sprawled upon the countryside like a lazy man on a couch. Here, a variety of folks wild their weight lives away. Ira Wardworthy, the owner of the mercantile, Bayola and Buford, the woodcarvers, and old fiddler bear, a musician of great reputation. They all lived here, you know, the rich and the not so rich, in odd little cabins and cottages. The rich lived in town and the poor lived in a humble hollow at the edge of bare, bare bone beggary creek with its trickling, trickling bony fingers of water. Of all the houses that were built and barely there, there was none more odd than old Persimmon, Persimmon's Pat Mansion. Years before, the halls had rung with music, laughter, and the rhythmic scuffing of dancing feet. But Persimmon Mansion had fallen on hard times. The windows were now shuttered and the grounds were in disrepair. It had been bought some years ago by a miserly otter called Persimmon, Persimmon Parsnip. She was a very odd otter, for she wore gowns sewn of old printed flower sacks and corn stalk bindings. An odd place, old Persimony Mansion, lived in by an odd Persimony parsnip, whose life was a mystery, a riddle. If Persimony Mansion was odd on the outside, what lay stored inside was odder still, for Persimony Parsnip was a saver, a finder of all things, discarded or sold beneath value. There were old rough woven blankets, patched and scratchy, stacked high. There were cans of this and cans of that, labels faded and, and dusty. Her crinkly skirts rustled down dusty halls, as with lanterns held high, she would take inventory of her possessions. Searching for something misplaced as her worn slipper shuffled, she often muttered these words. I close my eyes and look around. I look and look, but it can't be found. Newspapers, cardboards, balls of string, all were counted and cared for in this odd mansion by this odd otter. She added to her treasures daily, for she was always on the move, searching, searching. And the riddle was that she didn't know for what she searched. On any given day, Persimony could be found looking and looking for that which she could never find. The kindly villagers tried to help her in her search, but when they asked what she was looking for, she always answered the same. I close my eyes and look around. I look and look but it can't be found. Do you know what I'm looking for? Then with a shake of her head, off she would wander, looking here and there. What could she be looking for? No one knew and everyone asked. Tisk tisk, they would say as she shuffled by, poor old Miss Parsnip. If the truth be known, she was anything but poor. In fact, it could be said that she was the richest of the rich. Persimony chose to clutch her wealth in worn little hands, and she had made her richness her poverty. Mm -hmm. 
So life went on and barely there, summer and fall, in the springtime the rains fell and moistened the land, long parched by cold winter winds. Barren dry clods of poor earth became rich when touched by this wealth of rain. This year was wealthier than most of us, the rain tried to drown the sorrow of winter past. As lightning flashed and thunder cracked, the folk of barely there rushed quickly from overhang to porch, even Persimone moved more quickly as she held an old newspaper above her head to shed, uh, shed the downpour. Like all things, a little can become a lot. Creeks became, streams became, rivers became raging torrents. And just like that, the land was flooded. Oh, and it was frightful. The river oozed at first like molasses over griddle cakes. 